exhibition is part of Ireland Reaching Out. And Ireland Reaching Out is a non-profit, voluntary, community-based organisation in Ireland that welcomes back diaspora into parishes of origin for people who are around, around the world who are of Irish heritage. It does two things. Communities get together and find out who left and then trace their des descendants of local people who emigrated all around the world and invite them back. The other thing it does is that our volunteers meet and greet. So if you're in Kansas or if you're in Melbourne and you're coming back to Ireland and you've never been to Ireland and you're just finding out where your people are from, one of our volunteers will meet you locally, show you the house where your people came from, the, farm, the land they farmed, the graveyards, and introduce you to living relatives. So that's what Ireland Reaching Out does. This project is all about Ellis Island. Ellis Island uh, was, was started in 1892, so it's quite late in terms of genealogical. So nearly all of the descendants of people that went through Ellis Island are, are pretty traceable. So what we did for just one town in Ireland, which is Tulloch County Clare, was we took 71 individual people and we traced their families. And it was a terrific journey in itself of finding people all across America. We focused on America, most of these people are still remain in the United States. But their families are now into the thousands out of these 71 people. And we took their stories from finding out who were they, where did they come from? What families were they from? What were the townlands that they came from? And what was their circumstances before they emigrated to America? And then part of the journey, many of them wrote letters. We took parts of the letters. Then we found about the leaving, where they left, most of them from Queenstown, but others from Liverpool, going across into Ellis Island, their journey, their stories about arriving in Ellis Island and how traumatic it was and how what an adventure and how how amazing these people were, just to, because many of these people never ever again, again came back to County Clare. So then their Ellis Island experience going right through that, and then we followed their life after they left Ellis Island. Some people stayed in New York, some people went down south, some people went out west. And, uh, and it's amazing then, it's, it's really a story of not just Irish people, but social history of Irish people, and even a, a, a story of America. It's the culmination, I suppose, of about eight or nine months' work, intense research and that would involve um, certain volunteers in our volunteer network, people like Jane Halloran here from Tulla Reaching Out and the rest of the Tulla Reaching Out committee. And I would be the lead person who would be bringing about, I suppose, bringing to fruition this project. If, if we get a query, what happens is I try and match that query with a volunteer in a parish. So for example, for the parish of Tulla, we would have um, a committee of, of volunteers that would be led by Jane Halloran and, and others here in the committee. And they would have a certain amount of experience, whether it would be in folklore, local history, genealogy. And, you know, obviously if you're living in a parish, you know all about that parish area. You know about the parish records, you know about the graveyards, you know about field names, you know about local roll books and national schools. So all of that resource is really important information and it's the people in the parish that know their parish area best. So that's why volunteers are a huge resource for Ireland Reaching Out. I'm involved with Tuller Reaching Out and um, I was involved in the parish survey and I enjoy doing that because I, I'm very interested in place names. Though it made me very sad when I saw all the houses, you know, and the pictures of the houses. When you think of all them, every household in Ireland now go had huge families because um, before the famine, the population increased, doubled, because um, Girls got married, girls and boys got married very young. They got married 16, 17 years of age. And they had huge families. And then you also had the system of gavel kind where in Ireland where um, uh, the, the system was that the, if, if the boys got the family. And if the farm, if, if men had six sons, the farm was divided among the six. And each of them then had um, a family and that's why the population went up so much the famine you know that it doubled to eight million and um, you know when you think of all these houses it kind of makes me sad when I think of all the um, the people that lived in them long ago and where they went scattered all over the world another thing that I think about the the place names the Loganamnacha mm -hmm. you know we we did the survey and we we um, looked at all the place names and I was just thinking to myself that if the language ever dies out, which it never will, because there'll be always people in Ireland happy to speak the language, but if, if we say it did die out, it will live on in, its, in the place names, which are very, very, you know, when you think of all the lovely place names that we have around Tulla. There are Ulk, there are Halla, there are Nimrone, um, Glaundry, Onikel, um, 
all the clone, clone, all the clones, you know, just Tullock itself, Garuda, Garuda. Well, on Tullock is 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 um, is uh, is built on a on a hill, and that's the meaning of on Tullock is a little a raised ground, really. That's what it means. And there are Ulk, there is a little forest, and there are Ulk. There was something happened there, Ulk, but. And uh, they're in they're in a Something sad must have happened in that wood because it's the wood of the sadness. When I heard that there were quignies included, I, I was very anxious to uh, see what more information I could pick about. Uh, I would be considered about a third cousin to the quignies of Glendry. My native place would be Cluny. So uh, all the quignies uh, originated from Glindery, which is which are mentioned there. So uh, uh, I have just about started reading this. I'm just outside the parish myself, and and uh, I'm not in one of the eight families as a result, but I, I aim before the night is out to try and get some information on. Um, my mother's name was Garvey, um, just lived a couple of miles out the road, but just in the, in the parish of Cluny is Michael John is also, and um, I'd love to know more about those. And that's why you're a vested interest in being a volunteer with the group? Well, no, I'm a, a kind of a long time member of, of it, if, if you like, and, and um, we've been organising, bringing families back here and people back here from the States and from Australia and New Zealand for a few years now and uh, we've been fairly successful in it and, and uh, trying to find out their roots and for them and, and to help them out in that. It's a very unique project in the sense that every family is commemorated in a different way and every story is, um, you know, there's a difference to every story. There's, there's something special in every story. And they were all different ages. Uh, some were, some whole families emigrated. One went out, came back, took two or three siblings until most of the family was out there and just the parents would have been left um, behind, um, never to return. Maybe one of them did come back because when the parents died, the land would have um, gone out of the family otherwise. Uh, most of them married, naturalized, became naturalized citizens, raised families. Uh, one of the panels there is uh, the nun in the panel behind me there. She is still alive. She's in her 90s, very mentally sharp, absolutely thrilled that her mother and her father are both part of this project and um, in New York State. So she's, uh, it, it's just a terrific project and it's a project that will grow because as more people find out about Ireland reaching out and more people maybe discover that they had ancestors that went through Ellis Island, we can devote a page to each one of those individuals. So my great grandmother will have a page, my great grand uncle and other people, anybody in the community that has um, a relation that went through Ellis Island. So it's great. My, my great grandmother came from Tulla, came from Tarita and Tulla, which is about two miles north or two to three miles north of um, the village here. And her two brothers emigrated in the 1890s. And it was very common in the families there, particularly those families in the area. They couple went, uh, sent money back for a couple more to go. There were 12 children in the family. Uh, ten of them reached adulthood. Of those ten, seven emigrated, three stayed behind, um, which was very common in a lot of the families in that area, uh, but, but also throughout Tulla. And it's, it's amazing to see the ones that did come over, and you see them returning through Ellis Island, bringing back brothers and sisters or cousins or neighbors, um, or in some cases parents to, you know, where, where parents weren't going to be left behind, it was better. They all just chose to, to leave the, the land altogether, to leave Ireland altogether. So it's, um, it's a fantastic project. I mean, it does tell the story. It, it's a very sad story in a lot of ways, but it's a, a very hopeful story because they, they did have a lot of hopes and dreams for the future, which um, in turn, which is what brought them to America. Well, what we hope 
from this pilot project is that other parishes in, in, in the country will become interested. Um, the Department of Foreign Affairs has funded this as part of a pilot project and as I say we hope to, to roll that out in, in the future to other parishes and if it has, is as successful in those parishes as it, as it has been here it's, it's a really interesting project. Um, there are a lot of parallels I suppose with the research we've done here and with present day Ireland. You know, it it's not very hard to imagine how difficult it would be to say goodbye to a brother or sister. Um, and knowing that the odds against seeing that person again are very slim. And especially when you compare that to, you know, to present day Ireland um, and the fact that you know, it's still difficult to say goodbye despite the advances we've made in communications and technology. And I suppose what I have found personally in working in a project like this is that you become really invested in these stories. You want to know more about these people. You want to know, you hope that they had happy lives, that they had, you know, went on to have children and grandchildren. But if they didn't, that they were happy and lived fulfilled lives wherever they went in the world. So Ireland reaching out is irelandxo.com. You know, Ireland with, with a hug and a kiss. And, it's, uh, and in, on Ireland XO, there is a profile of every parish in the country. So if you're out there and you don't know where you're from, what you should do is, uh, if you know any information at all, come on. Or if you just know you're from Ireland and you just know a few things, we have volunteers who will handle that information. If you think that you're from County Clare, that's great. It's more specific. We have volunteers that will specialise in people from County Clare. But for instance, if you know where your town, the town is from, and, and it might be written on a Bible or it might be written on somewhere, and you want to reconnect, get what information you can and go to the town uh, on profile on irelandxo.com and write a note and our people, will, uh, the volunteers, there's three and a half thousand of the volunteers across Ireland will, will respond to you and it's amazing what you'll find out.